In the first video, we uh, asked questions in a spontaneous way. We're going to continue in this video, and I'm even going to have the advantage of not having my phone interrupt the video. Uh, but again, this is a spontaneous discussion. This is not a prepared uh, talk. It's just Paul Barrett here uh, asking me questions about uh, the Christian life and about uh, what it means uh, to be a Christian. Go ahead, Paul. What's your question? Okay, so one of my siblings asked, um, what does it mean for me, a child, to live my life as a Christian? What does it mean for me as a child to live my life as a Christian? This is like an overarching question. This is like what we call an er question, a question that covers the whole, it covers the, I mean, it's a Christian universe. Like, how do I operate as a Christian child? Okay. Well, it's about love. I have a friend who says, love is the answer. What is the question? Another friend who says, Jesus is the answer. What is the question? Okay. So the question always comes down to our love for Christ and our love for one another. And the problem is, is that we, we struggle every day to improve our serve, to improve our love. And uh, it's, you know, so basically love is tested every day in our family when we choose to love people when they are not being very lovable in return. And that, I think, is the challenge of a Christian child. It's also a challenge to choose to honor our parents uh, when the culture is at times tempting us to go the other way in, in many of the messages of the culture. In fact, I think about that scripture passage uh, in the Old Testament that says, I will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and children to their fathers on that great day of the Lord, lest I strike the land with a curse. Now, with that, what in other words, if there isn't this movement of love happening in a family, um, this movement of choosing to love, even when it's difficult, uh, then what happens is people get isolated and they feel, as it were, like they're under a curse. But the curse is not from God. God's always pouring himself out and inviting us to this banquet of love. We're the ones who separate ourselves out from him. I mean, the, the German word for sin is sunda, which means separation, or it, uh, it could also mean to rend, like tearing a garment apart. And what, what happens is we struggle to love and sometimes we find ourselves tearing each other uh, apart verbally. Uh, sometimes we get into fights and we need the healing and the reconciling power of God to bring us back together. And so it's always the case that the church provides both the example and the teaching and the presence of the grace of Almighty God, the gift to help us, helping grace, we sometimes call it, to move in the direction of love, but then we fail in the direction of love, but the church doesn't give up. The church offers in that situation healing grace, the healing of reconciliation, forgiveness. Sometimes uh, we use the sacrament of reconciliation 
in order to turn back to God. But uh, even the choice to ask forgiveness or to want to go to reconciliation is itself the invitation from God to start the healing. So let the healing start. So when you're a child, you're in this, you're, you're struggling to live the Christian life uh, and it's basically the same Christian life that you're going to live as an adult. Only when you're an adult, it's more diffused and it's more complex. But you're still struggling as an adult to build relationships like you do as a child to love your family. And uh, you're still uh, in the situation where you need both helping grace to grow in love and healing grace when you mess up. So uh, uh, that's, that's what I think. I think that the, uh, how do I uh, uh, remain a Christian child or, or act as a Christian child? I keep turning to Christ to, and the church to give me helping and healing grace. And he does it many ways. He does it through the Bible, through prayer, through the sacraments, through people praying with each other, through people gathering together joyfully to share meals, where people do things together for the poor or for each other. All these things become opportunities to both ask for the helping grace to grow in love and the healing grace to be forgiven when I screw up. And that is the uh, good news. Does that help to see that? Did I, yeah. did I answer that okay? Yeah, what about when, when you're at school? Well, at school, see, at school, it's a more d diffuse environment. So school is made up of people from different families. And the challenge of school is that many families, although they all, they tend to love each other, they have different expectations of what that looks like. And so the challenge at school is to find out what the particular language is that means something to the heart of that person. Because it's not necessarily the heart language that you use in your own family. Now, and that's, the, that's no easy thing all the time. But what you do in school is you interact and you show yourself to be just and you work with your teachers and you work with the fellow students on the projects and they, then they realize you can be counted on. And then over time, you learn that other family's approach because it might be different than, I mean, I mean that's, that's also the beauty of the kingdom of God. It's made up of many families. Mm -hmm. And the families express themselves different ways. They have different approaches to basic uh, life issues often. Uh, they come from different backgrounds. They have different amounts of money. They dr drive different kinds of cars. They, you know, uh, they come from different countries or language groups or, uh, uh, I mean, I mean, historically speaking, I mean, I mean, I'm not, uh, we're not dealing necessarily at school with a whole bunch of immigrants necessarily. But the issue is that people do have different cultures and different expectations in their families. And so the challenge of school is going to be uh, 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 more uh, learning uh, to uh, deal with differences. Whereas in the family, there's a lot of similar expectations, uh, and, but the closeness of the family requires uh, a different kind of virtue, patience, and, and, uh, and the choice to love when it's difficult because we rub each other the wrong way when we're in close proximity to each other. And, and people have what they call uh, their uh, manners that they put on for the people outside the family, and then they show their teeth, as it were, to their family members. They, they feel free to let their guard down and their ugly side comes out. And that's what uh, 
That's what love demands, that we love people even when it's difficult. There, there was a mother of uh, a number of, of children I knew uh, 40 years ago. Uh, she had, around 40 years ago, she had a, uh, a sign in front of her in her kitchen. And it said, children need love most when they deserve it the least. And it's also true at school. It's also true in the wider society that sometimes people who are doing kind of rotten things are proving to us that they need, they're crying out for love. Now, it doesn't mean that you, uh, you just uh, uh, ignore law breaking or, or uh, you know, you don't call the police if there's a real problem. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying that there's, there's, there's a desperation in people's quest for love that expresses itself in all kinds of often messed up ways. And you got to help people see the light. And mostly you do it by example. And sometimes you do it with words. You shouldn't be afraid to tell others the reasons for your hope. But you do it prudently you do it carefully and you spend most of your time simply showing them by example and by peace that uh, the the way to Christ is open to everybody question any no that was very helpful yeah. uh, any further elucidations well you see this is a complicated question and we just touched the surface. But I think we have to be willing to talk to each other honestly about the struggles that children and adults go through and talk about them realistically in light of the gospel. Thank you very much.